I think the main challenge is to get food inside, and there are bottlenecks. What are exactly these bottlenecks? It's very unclear, but I think a lot of it is basically um, the, probably the, the 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 inspection mechanism and the you know the ability of the um, movement inside Gaza because the trucks are loaded on the Egyptian border and it's massive. You know there are lines and lines of trucks loaded with food supplies ready to get in. So. I think you know our you know our reading into this is that probably either the inspection or the ability and the capacity of the uh, Rafah border crossing point from inside uh, to get into Gaza. Remember, this was a passenger uh, crossing point, and it was not meant for heavy trucks and for big supplies like that. I think that the, the situation is very difficult with food and water running out, you know, shelters uh, massively overcrowded and without fuel, so there, and there's no electricity. Baker, bakeries that are working with us, like only four of them are, you know, continue to operate because of shortage of fuel or because of the sustained damage. It is very complicated, of course, inside Gaza to move around because of the completely damaged infrastructure in many areas. Movement from one part to the from one part of the strip to the other is complicated. Uh, in addition, of course, there is an, uh, there, there 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 are like you know people are all over you know uh, different shelters and there is a, a massive population movement. So of course, that complicates the uh, provision of assistance. Um, and that is actually, if you look at the, the, the stocks, the food commodities that are inside Gaza, I think the wholesalers and the suppliers do have some stock, you know, less than two weeks, but they still do have some stock, but the, the, they are unable to supply the shops uh, because of this damaged infrastructure and the inability to move from some areas to the other. So it's quite complicated. But having said that, we are getting to people in shelters sometimes, like, and, and this is why also the amount of people, because the daily thing that happens in our operation is the fresh bread. 
And this is why there is variation. Some days they, they, we can reach 100,000 people, another day 170, another day 200,000, another 230,000. It all depends basically on the conditions of the road. The, the, you know, the, the, of course, that's an active conflict that's happening. Safety and security of the uh, you know, people moving around to distribute the food as well as also uh, the safety in the shelters so that we don't expose people to more dangers than what they are already uh, going through. The 451st meeting of the Security Council is called to order. Morocco, Namibia, the Kingdom of the Netherlands, New Zealand. The situation in the Middle East is growing more dire by the hour. The war in Gaza is raging and risks spiraling throughout the region. Divisions are splintering societies tensions threaten to boil over. At a crucial moment like this, it is vital to be clear on principles, starting with the fundamental principle of respecting and protecting civilians. In accordance with Rule 39 of the Council's Provision Rules of Procedure, I invite the following briefers to... I am deeply concerned about the clear violations of international humanitarian law that we are witnessing in Gaza. Let me be clear, no party to an armed conflict is above international humanitarian law. This is provisional rules of procedure. I also invite the following individuals to participate in this. It is important to also recognize the attacks by Hamas did not happen in a vacuum. The Palestinian people have been subjected to 56 years of suffocating occupation. They have seen their land steadily devoured by settlements and plagued by violence, their economy stifled, their people displaced, and their homes demolished. Their hopes for a political solution to their plight have been vanishing. But the grievances of the Palestinian people cannot justify the appalling attacks by Hamas, and those appalling attacks cannot justify the collective punishment of the Palestinian people. Coordinator for the Occupied Palestinian Territory. To ease epic suffering, make the delivery of aid easier and safer, and facilitate the release of hostages, I reiterate my appeal for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. Excellencies, even in this moment of grave and immediate danger, we cannot lose sight of the only realistic foundation for a true peace and stability, a two-state solution. Israelis must see their legitimate needs for security materialized, and Palestinians must see their legitimate aspirations for an independent state realized in line with the United Nations resolution, international laws, and previous agreements his briefing. I now give the floor to Mr. Thor Veneland. Mr. President, Excellencies, members of the Security Council, the abhorrent attack launched by Hamas on 7 October and Israel's devastating ongoing military operation in Gaza have taken a staggering toll on civilians and deeply shaken Israelis and Palestinians alike. As I told this council last week, and the Secretary General has just expressed, the events we are witnessing are unprecedented. They risk expanding to the wider region and may have profound long-term impact on the dynamics of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Berlin Hastings, the humanitarian coordinator in the OPT, will report in full. It is critical that we, 
as a united international community, employ all our collective efforts to end the bloodletting and prevent the further expansion of hostilities, including in the region. The stakes are astronomically high, and I appeal for all relevant actors to act responsibly. Any miscalculation could have immeasurable consequences. In this regard, I welcome Egypt's convening of the Cairo Peace Summit on 21 October and the efforts of the state in the region and beyond to address the unfolding humanitarian catastrophe for us and to pave the way for unlocking a real and serious peace process. The Secretary General has been very clear in expressing the Venice land for his briefing. And I now give the floor to Mrs. Lynn Hastings. In the appalling, appalling conditions. This past weekend, 34 trucks entered Gaza with life-saving supplies, and another 20 crossed Rafa into Gaza yesterday. 20 more of those are due to cross to today. We welcome this important development and we pledge to do our part to ensure these deliveries increase and continue. But these deliveries are a drop in the bucket compared to the vast scale of needs. Women and children comprise some 62% of these victims. While we negotiate with the government of Israel as to how best to bring fuel into Gaza, we have 400,000 liters of trucks ready to go this would provide fuel for approximately two and a half more days. For humanitarian affairs and emergency relief coordinator, Martin Griffiths. As my colleagues have repeatedly highlighted, there is nowhere to seek refuge in Gaza. When it comes to decisions on whether and where to flee, civilians are damned if they do and damned if they don't. Displaced families are reportedly returning to North Gaza due to ongoing bombardments because their basic needs, including safety, cannot be met in the South. I reiterate that civilians must be protected and have the essentials they need to survive.